All right, just continuing on with the uh, tanker trailer here. Um, I've finished all the running lights and I'll show you those uh, once I get it flipped over. But uh, while I got it on its back here, I thought I'd show you guys the air brakes and a little bit of detail and then kind of show you some of the wiring <coughs> and uh, how I've gone about doing that. So a little different than the flatbed trailers, but very similar. Um, it's got the, the little air tank there, the, the relay valve. And then if you can see, there's a little cross member in there. Let's see if I can show you on this one here. Now on the flatbed, um, there's a couple holes that line up perfectly with that cross member. So you can just stick a little screw in there and attach it. This one, this trailer doesn't have that hole. So I just uh, used some CA glue to attach it. And uh, I mean, you can see it's on there pretty good. So uh, the back axle is done. I just got to put the, uh, um, the slack adjusters on there, but I got the brake pods in place. So this is the way that I do it. I put the, the air tank and all that uh, portion of it in. And then afterwards, I'll uh, twist these and kind of put them in, in place. Um, and you gotta be careful when you do that because you really only got one shot because you gotta glue them to the axle and you wanna make sure they're lined up nice and straight so they, they don't look cockeyed. And then of course so that the, uh, the uh, push rods uh, go into the chambers correctly. But anyway, it looks really good. I think all the details are there that you'd see on a real uh, trailer. Uh, with the, the air lines coming out to into each brake pod. So um, as far as the wiring, that's all done. I wire my trailers a little different, I guess, than other people. I don't really care much for hooking them up to the truck and having signals or, or whatever. I mean, uh, it's a lot easier doing it this way. So I've got all the black to black, red to red. I've got a couple little marker lights on each side, a couple oranges, and then two in the front which I'll show you when I get it flipped over and then the two on the back side here. So anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. It's coming along really good. So I'll get those uh, those uh, remaining brake parts in and then uh, we'll have a look at it flipped over. All right, just uh, continuing on here, I wanted to show you guys uh, how I put these uh, slack adjusters with the push rod and then that, um, the black rod looking thing is, is called the S-cam. So it's a little tricky. There's a little bit of a technique to putting these in. So uh, I know it's upside down, maybe a little tricky to, to see here, but this has to be on that side of the shock. And uh, naturally you're gonna wanna just put it in like that. Apologize for all the shaking, but the way I do this is, there is a left and a right side, so um, what I do is stick it in the little hole there, push it in, and then as you saw there, just get that in there like that, and then you flip it around, and that way it'll, it'll end up on that side of the, uh, of the uh, shock. So that kind of just sits there like that. And then that S-cam or that black rod there just goes into the wheel well. So just to show you guys again, I know it's kind of awkward, but you see there's a little hole in the brake chamber. Maybe not, it's all black, but there's a hole there. It goes in there like that, push it in, and then twist it in like that. And then you can just glue that in place, nice and straight. Uh, one last thing I want to mention here, I just noticed myself, is that these are only an issue, that twisting technique on the back axle, because the shock, the way the shock's orientated, so for the front, you can just slide them right in. Um, you don't have to do the, the twisty twist there. So that goes right in there like that. And then you'll see there's a little lip right there.
right there. If you can see that the camera focuses right there on the axle. Right, right there. That this just sits on nicely. So what I do is I put a little dab of glue on there. And I sit it right on top. And then that holds it in place. So anyway, those are all in. Looks pretty good, I'd say. Here you can see some of the details. All right, one last thing before I flip the trailer, just to show you guys how I uh, connect the lights. Um, I use these little uh, lithium ion batteries and I've been using them on the flatbeds. I've been uh, putting a piece of Velcro on the battery and then a piece on the uh, trailer, uh, which works pretty good, but I thought this would work a little better. I just 3D printed a little box, the same width as the inside of the frame so that it's a nice snug fit. And the plan is to uh, put the battery in there like that. And then, let's see if I can get this over there. Just slide that in there like that. And then I can connect. I'll probably put that down with a little zap strap or something, but So I uh, don't necessarily need to have the trailer flipped over to uh, take the battery out or put it in. Just connect it, um, put it in the little box here. And that should be enough to hold it while it's bouncing down the road. If it's still a little too loose, I can just put a piece of tape on the edge and that should keep it in there nice and tight. Like I said, I'll go back and tuck those wires up a little better, but... Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully the next video I got this first uh, trailer, the lead trailer, finished off. Still got quite a few uh, bits and bobs I gotta add to it, so I'll go over all that stuff in the next video, but just to show you how it's kind of coming along. Very happy with it so far. Try to make it look a little more scale than the Tamiya kit with all the little uh, bits and bobs I've added to it, the lights and all that, but, um, the petrol can logo. But anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one.